The Battle of Lake Kasan, also known as the Shangkufeng Incident in China and Japan, was an attempted military incursion by Montukuo, a Japanese puppet state, into the territory claimed and controlled by the Soviet Union. That incursion was founded in the Japanese belief that the Soviet Union had misinterpreted the demarcation of the boundary based on the Treaty of Peking between Imperial Russia and Qing China and the subsequent supplementary agreements on demarcation and tampered with the demarcation markers. Japanese forces occupied the disputed area but withdrew after heavy fighting and a diplomatic settlement. Chapter 1 Background For most of the first half of the 20th century, there was considerable tension among the Russian, Chinese and Japanese governments, along their common borders in what became Northeast China. The Chinese Eastern Railway was a railway in northeastern China. It connected China, and the Russian Far East. The southern branch of the Kerr, known in the west as the South Manchuria Railway, became the locus and partial jasus belly for the Russo-Japanese War and subsequent incidents, leading to the Second Sino-Japanese War and Soviet-Japanese border conflicts. Larger incidents included the Sino-Soviet conflict of 1929, and the Mukden incident between Japan and China in 1931. The Battle of Lake Kasan was fought between two powers which had long mistrusted each other. Starting in the lead-up to the battle a wave of purges in the Far Eastern Front had caused many officers in the Soviet Army to be new inexperienced officers who feared to take the initiative, in July alone four and a half times as many people were purged from the front as in the previous twelve months. This in combination with a lack of infrastructure, the overburdening of the front's commander, Marshal Vasily Blücher, a shortage of equipment, and poor organization led to the front being in poor shape, the confrontation was triggered when the Soviet Far East Army and Soviet State Security Border Guard reinforced its Kasan border with Manchuria. This was prompted in part by the defection one month before, of Soviet General G. S. Lyushkov, in charge of all NKVD forces in the Soviet Far East at Hunchun, in the Tumen River area. He provided the Japanese with intelligence on the poor state of Soviet Far Eastern forces and the purge of army officers. Chapter 2 – Build-up On 6 July 1938, the Japanese Kwantung Army decoded a message sent by the Soviet commander in the Posier region to Soviet headquarters in Khabarovsk. The message recommended that Soviet soldiers be allowed to secure unoccupied high ground west of Lake Kasan, most notably the disputed Shangkufeng Heights, because it would be advantageous for the Soviets to occupy terrain which overlooked the Korean port city of Rajin, as well as strategic railways linking Korea to Manchuria. In the next two weeks, small groups of Soviet border troops moved into the area, and began fortifying the mountain with emplacements, observation trenches, entanglements and communication facilities. At first, the Japanese Korean Army, which had been assigned to defend the area, disregarded the Soviet advance. However, the Kwantung Army, whose administrative jurisdiction overlapped Shenkufeng, pushed the Korean army to take more action, because it was suspicious of Soviet intentions. Following this, the Korean army took the matter to Tokyo, recommending that a formal protest be sent to the Soviet Union. The conflict started on 15 July, when the Japanese attaché in Moscow demanded the removal of Soviet border troops from the Bezimianaya and Zyazionaya hills to the west of Lake Kasan in the south of Primorye not far from Vladivostok, claiming this territory by the Soviet-Korea border, the demand was rejected. Chapter 3 – Rattle The Japanese 19th Division along with some Montukuo units took on the Soviet 39th Rifle Corps under Grigory Stern. One of the Japanese army commanders at the battle was Colonel Kotoku Sato, the commander of the 75th Infantry Regiment. Lieutenant General Sutaki Kametsu gave Sato an order, you are to meet out a firm and thorough counter-attack without fail, once you gather that the enemy is advancing even in the slightest. The hidden meaning of this was that Sato had been ordered to expel the Soviets from Shenkufeng on the 31st of July. Sato's regiment launched a night sortie on the fortified hill. In the Shankufeng sector, 1,114 Japanese engaged a Soviet garrison of 300, eliminating them and knocking out 10 tanks, 
with casualties of 34 killed and 99 wounded. In the Shakofeng sector, 379 Japanese surprised and routed another 300 Soviet troops, while knocking out seven tanks, for 11 killed and 34 wounded. Thousands more Japanese soldiers from the 19th Division arrived, dug in, and requested reinforcements. High Command rejected the request, as they knew General Suotaka would use these forces to assault vulnerable Soviet positions, escalating the incident. Japanese troops defended the disputed area. In 1933, the Japanese had designed and built a Rinji Soko Resha. The train was deployed at 2nd Armored Train Unit in Manchuria and participated in the Second Sino Japanese War and the Shenkufeng conflict against the Soviets, transporting thousands of Japanese troops to and from the battlefield, displaying to the West the capability of an Asian nation to implement Western ideas and doctrine concerning rapid infantry deployment and transport. On 31 July, People's Commissar for Defense Clement Voroshilov ordered combat readiness for 1st Coastal Army and the Pacific Fleet. The Soviets gathered 354 tanks and assault guns at Lake Kassan, including 257 T-26 tanks, 3 SD-26 bridge-laying tanks, 81 BT-7 light tanks and 13 Su-5-2 self-propelled guns. The chief of the Far East Front, Vasily Blucher, arrived at the front line on 2 August 1938. Under his command, additional forces were moved up and from August 2 to the 9th, the Japanese forces at Shanku Feng were attacked. Such was the disparity of forces that one Japanese artillery commander observed that the Soviets fired more shells in one day than the Japanese did in the two-week affair. Despite this, the Japanese defenders organized an anti-tank defense, with disastrous results for the poorly coordinated Soviets, whose attacks were defeated with many casualties. Thousands of Soviet troops were killed or wounded and at least 46 tanks were knocked out, with another 39 damaged to varying degrees. After the Japanese pushed the Soviet border security unit, later reinforced by the 40th Rifle Division, from the hill and other positions the Japanese dug in while the Soviets reinforced their troops. Unlike the Japanese, the Soviets didn't have a railway close to the battlefield but instead a single unpaved road, so when Soviet reinforcements got to the battlefield, the Japanese were already well entrenched. The Soviets had attacked Japanese positions by air during the preparations for a ground attack. On the morning before the Soviet attack, 13 Soviet aircraft attacked the hill and 12 the rear of the Japanese forces, even though this isn't documented by all sources. This was followed by an attack of three Soviet infantry regiments however this attack didn't have artillery or air support, either because of poor preparations or in the case of air support possibly fog. Some sources however do claim that two artillery batteries supported the attack. The attack was supported by a tank regiment but regardless it soon stalled. This was largely due to the low preparedness of the Soviet troops. Some of the artillery was not ready, little was known of the Japanese dispositions, communications had not fully been set up and the left wing was not ready to start the attack at the appointed time. Despite the poor state of the Soviet force and the knowledge that the enemy was well entrenched the attack was ordered to go ahead. The tank crews had not been prepared for the hostile terrain so they weren't able to keep up the momentum. During the attack a number of commanders including the commander of the 40th Rifle Division's tank battalion abandoned their troops. On August 6 the Soviets renewed their attack. First multiple waves of bombers attacked the Japanese positions. This attack was delayed either because of fog or poor preparations. After the bombers an assault by tanks and infantry, including mechanized troops, supported by artillery was made. In the difficult terrain the tanks suffered heavy losses, only individual tanks made it to their objectives, all of which were destroyed or retreated later. During the attack an outflanking movement was made. The Soviets pushed back the Japanese after heavy fighting, the subsequent days the Japanese counter-attacked but were unable to recapture their positions. The Japanese were pushed back by the Soviet attacks but were still on the battlefield. Despite not being forced off the battlefield, 
it was clear that the local Japanese units would not be able to keep Shenku Feng without widening the conflict. On 10 August, Japanese Ambassador Mamoru Shigemitsu asked for peace. Satisfied that the incident had been brought to an honorable conclusion, on the 11th of August 1938, at 13 hours 30 minutes local time the Japanese stopped fighting and Soviet forces reoccupied the heights. Chapter 4, Consequences More than 6,500 Soviet officers and soldiers were awarded the orders, decorations, and medals of the Soviet Union, 26 of them were awarded the title Hero of the Soviet Union, and 95 were awarded the Order of Lenin. Soviet losses totaled 792 killed or missing and 3,279 wounded or sick, according to their records, and the Japanese claimed to have destroyed or immobilized 96 enemy tanks and 30 guns. Soviet armored losses were significant, with dozens of tanks being knocked out or destroyed and hundreds of tank troops becoming casualties. Japanese casualties, as revealed by Secret Army General Staff statistics, were 1,439 casualties, the Soviets claimed Japanese losses of 3,100, with 600 killed and 2,500 wounded. The Soviets concluded that this was because of poor communications infrastructure and roads as well as the loss of unit conference due to poor organization, headquarters and commanders and a lack of combat supply units. The faults in the Soviet army and leadership at Kassan were blamed on the incompetence of Marshal Blücher. Vasily Blücher, apart from leading the troops into action at Kassan, was also supposed to oversee the Trans-Baikal military districts and the Far Eastern Front's move to combat readiness using an administrative apparatus that delivered army group, army and corps level instructions to the 40th Rifle Division by accident. On the 22nd of October, he was arrested by the NKVD and is thought to have been tortured to death. The Japanese military, while seriously analyzing the results of the battle, engaged with the Soviets once more, with disastrous results, in the more extensive Battle of Kalkin Gol in the Soviet Japanese border conflict of 1939. This second engagement resulted in the defeat of the Japanese Sixth Army. After World War II, at the International Military Tribunal for the Far East in 1946, 13 high-ranking Japanese officials were charged with crimes against peace for their roles in initiating hostilities at Lake Kassan.